Hey there, Type 1 Diabetic Warriors. Jim here with a story today that you're going to find rather interesting. The backstory is it goes back 15 years of clinical and preclinical research. That's how long it takes to develop drugs. It doesn't matter whether it's for diabetes, cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, you name it. It takes years and uh, this story illustrates the whole long process. Two big players in this, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City and City of Hope in Los Angeles. It's an interesting story. You're gonna find it very enlightening. They are now in phase one clinical trials, finally. We got the whole story for you. Hit the like and subscribe button. As always, we appreciate your help in helping us to reach more people around the globe. Now let's find out about these new insulin producing beta cells. In preclinical studies, a team of researchers from Mount Sinai Health System in New York City and City of Hope in Los Angeles report new findings on a therapeutic combination that regenerated human insulin producing beta cells, providing a possible new treatment for diabetes. The findings were published recently in Science Translational Medicine. For the study, the natural product harmine, which is found in some plants, was combined with a widely used class of type 2 diabetes therapy called GLP-1 receptor agonists. So, what is a GLP-1 receptor agonist you ask? Here is the definition. A glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor antagonist is a medication that lowers insulin secretion and increases plasma glucose levels. Researchers transplanted a small number of human beta cells into mice that had no immune system and that also served as a standard model of type 1 and type 2 diabetes, these mice were treated with the combination therapy and their diabetes was rapidly reversed. Strikingly, human beta cell numbers increased by 700% over three months with this drug combination. This is the first time scientists have developed a drug treatment proven to increase adult human beta cell numbers in vivo. This research brings hope for the use of future regenerative therapies to treat the hundreds of millions of people with diabetes potentially, said Dr. Garcia Ocana, the paper's corresponding author. It has been remarkable to watch the story unfold over the past 15 years, said Dr. Stewart, who, along with Peng Wang, PhD, professor of medicine, endocrinology, diabetes and bone disease, at Icon Mount Sinai, conceived of and performed the initial high-throughput drug screen that led to the discovery of harmine described in Nature Medicine in 2015. The steady progression from the most basic human beta cell biology, through robotic drug screening and now moving to human studies, illustrates the essential role for physician scientists in academia and pharma. I want to note the length of time this potential therapy has taken from infancy until this stage. 15 years. Many viewers of this channel often ask when there will be a cure for type 1 diabetes. This timeline illustrates how long basic research takes just to get to the point of animal studies. After all this takes place human trials begin. Growing new beta cells fortunately, most people with diabetes have some residual beta cells, which is what inspired the research team to search for ways to restore their numbers. The team had previously shown that several different inhibitors of an enzyme in beta cells called DYRK1A can induce the proliferation of adult human beta cells in a tissue culture dish for a few days. But prior to this study, no one had shown the ability to expand human beta cells numbers in vivo in human islet grafts used in an animal model over many months. The term in vivo means a process taking place in a living organism. According to Sarah A. Stanley, Associate Professor of Medicine, Endocrinology, Diabetes and Bone Disease, and Neuroscience, at Icon Mount Sinai. Using an advanced laser microscopy tool called iDiscoPlus that effectively makes biological tissue transparent, Dr. Stanley saw that beta cell mass was dramatically increased through mechanisms that included enhanced proliferation, function, and survival of the human beta cells. The technology allowed for accurate and rigorous quantitative assessment of engrafted human beta cells for the first time. Translating results to the clinic the Mount Sinai team recently completed a phase 1 clinical trial of harmine in healthy volunteers to test its safety and tolerability. At the same time, Robert J. DeVita, PhD, Professor of Pharmacological Sciences and Director of the Marie Jose and Henry R. Kravis Drug Discovery Institute at Mount Sinai, has developed next-generation DYRK1A inhibitors. Mount Sinai is conducting studies to test these in humans for potential toxicity risks and estimate dosing for clinical trials, and is planning to initiate first in-human trials with independent research teams next year. 
Researchers also want to address the fact that in patients with type 1 diabetes, the immune system will continue to kill new beta cells. So, they plan to test inducers of beta cell regeneration together with immunomodulators that regulate the immune system. Their goal is for the combination to allow new beta cells to thrive and improve insulin levels. Our studies paved the way for moving DYRK1A inhibitors into human clinical trials and it's very exciting to be close to seeing this novel treatment used in patients, Dr. Garcia Ocana said. There is nothing like this available to patients right now. Type 1 diabetic warriors will follow this process closely and report back on the progress of this study in phase 1 trial as the process unfolds. Well, I think that's pretty interesting, a 700% increase in beta cells over three months. That's producing a lot of insulin. It's very hopeful, and I hope you enjoy this video. Again, it's just another example, in this case, two very renowned universities in uh, the United States who are working on this technology. Uh, and now, finally, they, the, the race has started. They are in clinical trials, phase one, but uh, I like the fact that I'm finding more and more companies working on different technologies, all attempting to get to the end point, which is a cure for type 1 diabetes. And as always, the big issue is protecting those beta cells, but other companies are working on specific ways to do that. So it's all, I think, very exciting stuff. We will stay on top of this and keep you apprised as things develop. As always, thanks for spending time with us today. And uh, I'm Jim, this is Type 1 Diabetic Warriors, and we'll talk to you again real soon.